Hey there, this is Mike again. Um, this episode is going to be on charting basics for those of you who, who have never worked with um, stock charts before, uh, so you know what you're looking at, because um, some of these things are kind of, kind of confusing. So what we're looking at here is a basic candlestick chart, and there are, there are lots of different kinds of charts, but this is the kind of a standard one, um, where of Sorrento um, Therapeutics, which is a pharmaceutical company. And what I'm going to do is we're just going to take a look at these candlesticks here a bit and show you what they what they mean. So if we zoom in here, you can see that we have green and red candles. So Green candles, like this big one here, um, is where the body of the candle, okay, which is this part, so the open is right here, so that's the bottom of the body of the green candlestick, and then the low is this wick down here that you can see, so then it goes up here to the high, which is all the way up here, and you can see on the um, the indicators up here what uh, the open, high, low, and close are. But anyway, so the top of this wick is the high, and then the close is wherever the the top of the of the body of the candle is. So that's a, a green candle. So that's you know an, an up day. That's a you know a bullish day. So then on the red candlesticks, um, again you have open, high, low, and close. But in this case, the open is going to be at the top of the body, okay, so right here in this, on this particular candle. The high is going to be the top of the wick, and then the low is going to be the bottom of the wick. This one right here has just a little, little tiny short one. And then the close for red candle is going to be the bottom of the body, okay. So... Again, green candles, red candles, so green candles, you, the, the open uh, is lower than the close, okay, so the, the price is increased at the close of, of that candle, and red candlesticks, the open, or the, rather the close is lower than the open, okay, so that's basically lost money, right? Then you have these, what's called, you have gaps, okay, so if you look at the bottom of the wick here on this candle and then the top of the wick on this one there's a gap here okay so gaps are important because they often tend to act as price magnets because you could probably go back to this chart like right here there's a little gap okay right between this this one and that one gaps tend to get filled in charts later on so like if price had gone up here and then come back down, oftentimes these gaps will get filled, so those act as price magnets. Um, and gaps can go, can go back quite some, some distance, okay? Um, and again, it's not, it's not a hard and fast rule, but, but gaps do tend to be filled. So, let's see, what else do we need to cover here? So, on the chart, okay, you can see over here, now this is trading view, this is my main... Um, viewing system that I use for charting. So you have your price scale over here, um, and then in, in trading view you have a number of different indicators and so on that you can put on. Now I'm going to cover those briefly here. Um, again, we're going to zoom in a little bit. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you first. Um, stock charts like this are fractal, and they have, in other words, you know, there are many different time frames you can look at. This is a daily chart, so which means that each candle represents one day of trading activity. Um, and then you can have a weekly chart, like this one, okay, and again you see similar patterns, right? You have, you know, green candles, red candles, and so on. Um, but in this case, each candle represents a week of trading activity. And then here we have a month, Okay, you can you know just go crazy with this, and you go all the way down to five minutes. I mean, some people trade on even shorter time frames, but I, I don't. I stick with typically the daily and sometimes the weekly. So, but it's fractal in that you know the same, the same look. Um, you can see the same kinds of patterns um, on different time frames, and, and there are lots of you know indicators and. Uh, 
chart patterns and candlestick patterns and all kinds of other things that people use to try and figure out you know what the market is going to do next. And one of the great things about um, Lachella's automatic investment management or AIM system is that you don't really have to worry about that um, because AIM is math based and it doesn't it doesn't really care about chart patterns. It just cares about price <laughs> action. So, but we do use, or I do use a couple, um, one indicator um, set at different settings primarily. So we're going to touch on that now. Because um, one of the things with AIM is that it will, you know, at any given price level, it will tell you how much to buy or sell or hold if, if not enough movement has taken place. But one issue the Lachello system has is that um, it was originally designed to be time-based. He originally had you do your trades once a month because he developed the system back in the 70s and they didn't really have the tools back then that we have now. And so it was time-based. Now, that will still work, but the thing is is that now we can actually look at these charts and we have indicators that will give us um, clues about about price action so we can we can time our our buys and sells um, buying in particular um, based on price action because that's important because like here for example um, you know Sorrento peaked right here and then it started dropping well now you know maybe the the um, your once a month check you know for your buys and sells would be right here well what you really want to try to do right is wait to buy until you get closer to the bottom okay because you're gonna get a bigger discount there and get more shares at a better price so we're, um, a number of people have tried different strategies the one that I found that works really well for me uh, involves price channels and what these do I'm gonna put the first one on here and this looks a little busy um, but what this does basically this one is set for you know two period intervals so the high of every two days is what these dots represent and of course as this goes down okay we're like right here this this particular dot let me select the our little uh, um, ruler here okay so so this dot right here okay represents a drop of 35 percent now let's say that we had a we'd had a sell up here um, that we were already in the stock if it dropped down to 35 percent chances are you'd get a buy there right but of course you're not anywhere close to the bottom and so what I did was I was like well okay so what if we add another price channel indicator on there so let's say that you had a trans that you had a sell up here okay let's say that you you nipped the very top okay and then the price drops down here and I developed the system so the two day is fast right so it, it it follows price pretty close so let's say we had a big plunge you know a stock loss almost 35 percent but then let's say that some some news came in and, and that investors are like, holy cow, I got to get back in the stock. Well, you just took advantage of a 35% price drop whenever it started going back up again, right? But in this case, let's say it didn't, okay, like Sorrento didn't here. So we probably have a buy right there because 35%, you know, AIM likes those kinds of discounts. But we're not done yet. And so what we do is we then trigger our next buy based on the nine day high which are these cyan dots here so this we just track this right down and we pick up the buy here okay so that's a 60 percent discount off from the top of that peak up there all right so aim's gonna like that a lot and then if you see what happens here um, from here up to the peak here that's a 55% gain so you're going to be selling some shares at a, at a nice profit there you're going to be making some money um, and again let's track this one let's say we went from the high here and track the two day we track the white dots down keep going keep going keep going okay you probably would have had a buy down here so just tracking that price closely gets you a 41% discount 
Now you're not going to get too much more than that really if you buy, you know, if you stick with the nine. Um, but then of course price is going to start going back up and you're going to start selling, um, putting uh, some cash aside for the next big drop. Now um, some of you are going to ask, well, why don't, why don't we, you know, buy down here? Well, you can, but, but here's the problem. You, you don't know, you don't know where the bottom is, right? And there's a phrase for that in, in trading that's called catching a falling knife. And a lot of the time people will try to, try to time it like, oh, I'm going to catch the very bottom. Um, and they, and they load up on, on shares, uh, and then the price keeps dropping. And then they're kind of like, Oop. They join the the bag holders. Okay, you, you don't want to do that. So don't don't be a bag holder. That's bad. Um, now let's back out of this a second. Let's see if we can find something else. Okay. So let's look at this at this drop here. All right. So let's let's say that we we entered or or bought some shares down here, and we sold on the way up here and made a nice profit. Set a bunch of cash aside. Okay. And so now. We follow the two-day down. Let me get my ruler again here. We follow the two-day price level down, the white dots. So there's a 33% drop. Okay, so we'd probably make a buy there, right, on this candle. Um, but obviously the the drop is not done. Okay, so then we'd follow the two-day or the nine-day. I'm sorry. So that would come down here, and that that would probably trigger again there. Um, it might or might not. It depends on, on what he tells you, but let's assume that it does. So, but you're like, well, wait a minute, we haven't we haven't finished yet. Okay, well that's when you bring out, you start bringing out the big guns, right? We're going to jump out to 26 days, and I'm going to turn this off. Now, on the 26 day, let me back up here. Oops, excuse me. 26 day. All right, you get your first trigger here, but see, we already bought down here, so you're not going to buy there again. Okay, and so you generally buy lower. So that's going to drop you down here. All right, so you've got a 62% or so discount where you probably buy some more. But, you know, price still isn't done going down. It's like, oh my gosh, what's happening here? All right, that's when you bring out the long-term one. Now, again, you are not necessarily going to get the very bottom, right? Okay, this is going to keep you going probably all across here. 291 was the high there. Um, 291 was a high there. You might possibly get a buy there, but probably not. Okay, but this would have you buying back in or probably buying your last shares, um, if any, over here. And you're, you're wondering, well, but, but what, about, what about down here? You know, what about down here? What about all this? Because, you know, boy, we could, you know, dive down here and, you know, buy, buy a bunch of shares down here and, boy, that's a 50% profit right there. Well, again, the problem is you don't know where the bottom is. Um, anybody who tells you that they know where the bottom is or they know where the top is um, is being, yeah, is uh, full of, you know, what... Uh, because no one knows for sure. No one knows. Um, charting, um, fib lines, all the other indicators, that, you know, everything. No one knows for sure. Um, there's a saying that, you know, only Mr. Market or Ms. Market, um, you know, knows, knows for sure what's going to happen. And that's very true. So, again, you're not trying to catch the bottom. You're not trying to catch the top. You're trying to make, get the meat of the move and, and make profit. And that's what AIM will help you do. So, but that's how these indicators work. And again, you start with the fast ones, um, you know, nail any fast profit that you can, and then you move on to the longer term indicators, whoop, sorry, to get you deeper um, into bigger discounts. Um, and like today, um, I'm going to turn the 26 back off. So today, SRNE, Sorrento is, you know, making a nice move at bottomed out down here. And I'll show you one last thing. I usually have like one, one moving average indicator on here. Now what these are, this is basically a measure of, in this case, the previous hundred days. If you can see this indicator here, or the previous hundred periods. 
and oops, let's see, I have to bring up my, my keyboard kind of goes to sleep here. Um, and you can change this, okay, to show different things. And we'll, I'll go over later some of the critical moving averages. But I just sometimes put this on here as a different perspective um, to give me an idea what's going on. Because like the 100 MA is one of the one of the critical moving averages. Uh, it's not one of the more popular ones, but it, it does come into play a lot. And you can see that um, Sorrento is kind of bouncing off of this zone here. And while we're at it, I will turn on the 26 again. Um, that brings into play support and resistance, which we'll cover real quick. So these price levels that you see here, these long flat areas, those tend to be levels of support, okay, which is where price comes down like it did here, and it hits this zone represented by this flat area here, and it tends to bounce off of that, okay? And just like over here, you can see that, um, you know, this level here started acting as kind of a resistance zone that this guy kind of ran into and bounced off of. And that, you know, those price levels are things to watch because that's where you can get price reversals either, either to the upside, um, bouncing off of support like here, or to the downside, bouncing off of resistance. Now again, you don't really have to worry about that much with, with AIM because it you know, it just looks at the price and says, okay, buy, sell, um, or hold, and here's how many shares. But this can help you kind of give, get an idea of, okay, you know, should I expect these, you know, indicators to start catching up with price here or not? You know, is, is a downtrend likely to continue or not? And a lot of the time that'll, that'll help just in terms of kind of, you know, reassuring yourself. Um, because even with, when AIM is taking care of things, uh, you know, we are human and we kind of, you know, get, get emotive about what's going on um, with the price action here. So, <laughs> anyway, um, that's kind of charting basics. Uh, I'm not going to really cover a lot more there, other than to say there are tons and tons of indicators out there, and they're fun to play with, and, and, uh, and, people, and, and they, they can be useful once you learn how to use them. But again, AIM, you don't need them. Um, but if you want to learn more about these, there, there's a ton of information on sites like investopedia.com um, and others, and also on TradingView. TradingView has a lot of uh, you know, tutorials and so on. So anyway, that's it for Charting Basics. And thank you. And again, if, you, if this helped you, please hit the like button and subscribe and I will be covering more as we go.